Getting to see brand new Pokemon revealed to the world is really freaking fun. Whenever we're introduced to brand new Pokemon though, they always come along with a brand new region. Which makes sense, obviously, but what if we were introduced to new Pokemon from old regions we have already been to before? Like, what if new discoveries were made in these regions that we already thought we had seen everything from? This is something that hasn't really ever happened before in Pokemon, minus kind of the whole Meltan thing, but it's not really a Kanto Pokemon, so it doesn't really count. But nevertheless, I think it would be absolutely amazing if it did happen for real someday, which is why in today's video, we are going to explore this very concept and look at what it might be like if every old Pokemon region we have already been to introduced brand new Pokemon. To illustrate these ideas, I will be showcasing some fan art designs as well, all of which will be credited in the description below, and I highly recommend you go check these artists out and show them some support. Realistically though, this feature most likely won't happen for real anytime soon, but we can sure as heck dream, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. Starting with Kanto, what new Pokemon could we see here if one were to ever be added? Well, I think what makes the most sense for this first region is a brand new man-made Pokemon. First, this could legitimately work as far as introducing a new Mon in an older region because it completely dodges the question of where did it come from since people literally made it, which isn't uncommon for Pokemon either. Also, Kanto is heavily focused on technology, with multiple man-made Pokemon in its decks already, so this would definitely be the way to go for this region. As far as what Pokemon specifically I think should be introduced, I got two options, and they both have to do with the number 3. Mew 3 and Porygon 3. Mew 3 has long been a fan idea as another clone of Mew, but it has also been mentioned within official Pokemon material as well, and if they ever did make it as an actual Pokemon, it would make for an insane amount of hype and would also create an insane amount of publicity for Pokemon, so I think it would actually be worth doing at some point. As far as Porygon 3, it would make sense for Kanto as well, considering Porygon was created in Kanto, and Porygon 2 most likely was as well. And given that Porygon 3 was the goal before that project went south and resulted in Porygon Z, I think it would be awesome to revisit that idea and bring Porygon 3 to life successfully someday, and doing it in Kanto, where it all started for this family of Pokemon, would be amazing as well. When it comes to Johto, there are two major options that come to mind right off the bat, and both of them make a lot of sense in my opinion. The first is introducing the original Legendary Beasts, as in, the unnamed Pokemon that became Entei, Suicune, and Raikou. I know there is a very convincing theory out there that these Pokemon were a Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon, but we've never seen them, so they could just as easily be brand new Pokemon, and it would be a great opportunity to introduce new Pokemon in an old region. In fact, these Pokemon, as we have learned recently, looked very different during their beta stages, so I think these hypothetical Pokemon could even be based on the Legendary Beasts beta forms, just polished up and tweaked a bit. I mean, the whole idea behind this event in the games is that these Pokemon were basically given a glow up following the events of the Burned Tower, and looking at their designs from beta to final, that is exactly what happened in real life too, so I think it would make all the sense in the world, not to mention be a fantastic reference, if Game Freak ever wanted to entertain the idea. The other option for Johto, meanwhile, is brand new baby Pokemon. Johto has a big association with the discovery of Pokemon eggs and baby Pokemon in general, so I don't think it would be unreasonable to discover some new ones someday. Plus, don't tell me you don't need this baby Lickitung, because you totally do. New baby Pokemon like this are way too adorable not to exist, so this would be really cool to see someday as well. 
In Hoenn's case, the biggest open-ended aspect of this region is probably the Draconids that were introduced in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. There is still a lot of questions surrounding them, and given that they were much more active in Hoenn's distant past and specialize in Dragon-type Pokemon, I think introducing a new Dragon-type to go along with them would be pretty amazing. Everyone loves dragon types, and having a new dragon Pokemon, one that existed in Hoenn long ago, to go along with some more Draconid lore would be one big juicy helping of content that I think would have everyone clamoring to go back to Hoenn. However, I think another option that could also exist within Hoenn for this idea is an evolution for Hoennian Linu. We obviously got Obstagoon in Generation 8 for Galarian Linoon, and the whole idea is that Galar is apparently a harsher environment for these Pokémon, so they evolved in order to adapt. But I feel like you could also use that idea to create another Linoon evolution for Hoenn, and maybe it is the result of Linoon and Hoenn being a little skittish and quick to run away from any potential predators as opposed to facing them head-on like in Galar. This could result in an evolution with an emphasis on speed, which would be a cool contrast to Obstagoon and would also add to the idea of divergent evolution in the Pokémon world in a really cool way. In Sinnoh, it's all about the myths and legends of the region, as well as the creation of the entire Pokémon world, so I think a new Pokémon here would have to probably be involved with all of that and possibly even with Arceus itself. There are obviously still so many questions surrounding Arceus, so why not answer some of them, and maybe even create some more with a brand new Pokémon that ties into Arceus' story? I really love this idea in particular from the Pokémon Obsidian fan game, which has this Pokémon, known as the Omega Pokémon, being a direct counterpart to Arceus as the Alpha Pokémon. Something just like this could be insanely, insanely cool, and since we are currently revisiting Sinnoh right now, I guess I'll go ahead and cross my fingers and hope for the best because I would love for this idea to be a real thing. For Unova, there is literally only one Pokémon that could take up this role, and only one that should, because it is just dying to be introduced in a future game. I think you may know who I'm talking about, but if you don't, I am referring to none other than the original Unova Dragon, the one that was made up of Reshiram, Zekrom, and Qrem in the distant past before it was split up into the Tau Trio. I have discussed this one before, so there really isn't much else to say, but this is probably the number one new Pokémon from an older region that absolutely needs to be real. Like, seriously, this needs to happen at some point. In fact, it really, really needs to happen because Unova is technically now on deck for remakes of its own, even though we're still probably five plus years away from that, but when the time comes, this original dragon absolutely needs to be a part of it. Looking at Kalos, there is one major gap in its regional Pokedex, a proper legendary trio. There is the box art trio with Xerneas, Eveltal, and Zygarde, but the sub-trio like Kanto's Legendary Birds, Johto's Legendary Beasts, or Hoenn's Legendary Golems is missing entirely, and Kalos could really use some love in this department. I did recently make a theory, however, stating that the Swords of Justice from Unova could be this trio for Kalos, which I also would love to see confirmed, but if not, I would love to see a brand new trio as well. Given that they would be legendary Pokémon, they can pretty much come out of the woodwork at any time and have it be justified, so if future Pokémon games ever decide to toy with this idea in the future, this would be a really good fit for Kalos. Next up, of course, is Alola, and Alola has some pretty obvious candidates here as well. The first is naturally the Ultra Beasts, and since they literally come from different dimensions and worlds, new Ultra Beasts could always be introduced at any time when and if Alola is ever revisited. The other option, though, is Fossil Pokémon. 
Alola is one of only two regions along with Johto to not have any fossil Pokemon of its own. In Alola's case, this is because it is based on Hawaii, and Hawaii is a little too young to really have many fossils of its own. So it absolutely makes sense, but at the same time, fossils are something that can be newly discovered at any time, and of course, creative liberties with the game can be taken as well, so getting a new discovery of new fossil Pokemon in Alola would not only be really cool, but is also plausible in my opinion as well. It could even coincide with the completion of that one fossil park that that NPC in Alola mentioned that he wanted to start, so if you ask me, those are a couple of fantastic starting points for a future game that revisits Alola, and I would very much like to see it happen for real someday. And last, for now anyway, but certainly not least, is Galar. I also have two possible options for Galar, the first of which is one that has been widely discussed, and that's the original forms of the Galar fossils. These fossil Pokemon are extremely unique because they're basically botched restorations consisting of two halves of two separate Pokemon, implying that there's a whole version of each of them that has never been seen before. I know it's probably not going to happen anytime soon, but I really hope we get to see these guys in an official capacity at some point, because it would be amazing. The other option I have here to consider are more evolutions to some of the Galarian forms. Galar introduced the concept of regional variants being able to add additional evolutions, but not all of the Galarian forms received a new evolution either. So if new Galar Pokemon were to ever happen, I think any of the Galarian forms that did not receive a new evolution could be a good candidate for this, particularly Rapidash, because they totally botched what Galarian Rapidash could have became, and an evolution could totally redeem it. Like, look how majestic this beautiful creature is. We are still in Gen 8 currently, so who knows, maybe Game Freak will surprise us and throw out one of these new Pokemon just for fun before it's all said and done. And there you have it, those were some new Pokemon that could be introduced in old regions. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and let me know what you think of these ideas with a comment. And again, check out the artists of the fan art I used with the link in the description. Subscribe as well for more Pokemon content, and you can also help support the channel further by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and by watching my Pokemon Cardinal series here on YouTube, both of which are massively appreciated. With that said, I will see you all soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, thanks for watching, and I will smell you guys later.